Welcome to Unit 3 on Genetic Algorithms. In this unit, we will discuss various terminologies and the steps involved in solving a problem using genetic algorithm. We will take an example problem and solve it during the process of understanding genetic algorithms. Okay, credits are due to this archive's preprint where genetic algorithm is explained in simple words even for non-technical audience. Assume that we have a four-dimensional vector x. Further assume that we have a function f of x is equal to x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 3 times x3 plus 4 times x4 is equal to 30. We can also move the right hand side in this equation to the left hand side now our job is to find out x1, x1, x2, x3 and x4 which satisfies the above equation or equation 1. Ok, let's try solving this problem. Assume that we are told that x1, x2, x3 and x4 belong to the set of integers it is in the range of 0 to 30. Now this can be achieved using other methods. This problem can be solved using other methods but here we will solve it using genetic algorithms. Now there are many candidate solutions possible for example 15, 5, 0 and 10 can achieve the goal or 5, 10, 5, 20 maybe. Ok, so in Darwin's language these are individuals or chromosomes, potential solutions and each chromosome consists of just of genes here four genes further the set of all chromosomes constitute the population or set of now in this unit we will try to answer some questions while solving this problem the first question is among these four or uh, these six solutions potential solutions which ones are better and which ones are very bad which ones are fit and which ones are unfit? How do we quantify fitness or betterness? So we need a fitness function to solve this problem. So fitness functions are the first to be determined when solving a problem using genetic algorithm. Another important question is how will fitter solutions generate new solutions? They for particularly use crossover between chromosomes and we will also discuss that. Related to this is the crossover rate, which is also important. Further, there is a question that whether the offsprings are exact replica of the parents. No, replicas are not exact copies of parents as genes undergo also mutations. We will also discuss the mutation rate. As we discussed in the last two units, genetic algorithm is an iterative algorithm. So, how can we decide when to stop? What is the convergence criteria? We will formally discuss this while solving this problem. Okay, so let's begin solving this problem. First, we need to decide how many chromosomes our population will contain. Assume 6 in our case. And as x is 4 dimensional, so genes for chromosome are 4. It's not, re let's randomly initialize the population according to the constraints. It is important to note that your initialization may be different than mine. If we seed the random number gener generator and seed provided different seeds, then the random numbers may be generated in a different way. Okay, after random initialization, the next step is to compute the fitness of each chromosome. Fitness can be computed as x1 plus plus 2x2 plus 3x3 plus 4x4 minus 30. And the difference is absolute difference. Now if this value is smaller, it means we are closer to the target. Exactly 0 means we are on target. Okay, let's compute the fitness quantity. Rewriting the function f of x, solving the above equation for chromosome 1 yields 94 similarly for the second chromosome we get 80 
Continuing for the other chromosome, we get 83, 46, 94 and 55 as the fitness value. In the current problem setting, current problem setting fitness value closer to 0 are good. Okay, let's write these values in the last column and erase some contents to generate some space. The next step decides who will go to the next stage, which chromosomes will survive and which will fade survival of the fittest as discussed in the last unit. Now we need to convert these values to probabilities. As the probability sh should sum to 1, we need to convert the fitness values into probabilities first. Let's do that by dividing 1 divided by the fitness value. Now the fitness value, if it is 0, uh, it's good, but our implementation should avoid division by 0, as it may generate some exceptions. So we will add 1 to the denominator. So 1 divided by 1 plus fitness value will, do, will generate the uh, fractional, fractional values for the fitness values. Okay, so we can similarly compute for other chromosomes. Now if we sum these 6 fractions, these do not sum to 1. For computing fitness probabilities, we can take fitness fractional value and divide by the sum of fractions. We get 0 0.1254 for the 4, for the first chromosome 0 0.1456, 0 0.1408 and so on. Now some of these probabilities are higher than others, which means these are fitter individuals compared to the other. Let's create some space and write the probability here. Now Now the probability sums to 1. Some chromosomes, as I said earlier, have higher probability than others and these are the fit individuals. Okay, I think this video is getting longer, so I will stop here. In the next video, we will explain how these fitness probabilities will drive the selection process. If you have any question, you can ask in the comments. Thank you.